does privacy matter? Privacy matters for a number of reasons, and I would like to talk to you about some of the greater ideas of uh, privacy and also some of the more practical approaches why privacy matters and then maybe about some of the consequences that this has for us. Privacy is an essential element of democracy. One of these elements of democracy are elections, as we all know. Another is a working system of checks and balances. And another important element of, uh, of uh, democracy are civil rights, fundamental rights that we have. That is freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of press, but also the freedom of assembly. And uh, the absence of these civil rights will also have huge implications um, on, on this democracy. We all know that when we feel watched, that we change our behavior. Foucault has described that greatly, um, and he has called this the panopticon. You can see that. This is an image of the perfect prison. There is a watchtower in the middle, and the person can watch all the cells around. And it has been um, proven that not only feel do we change our behavior when we feel when we are being watched, but also when we feel being watched. There's even research that shows that when you see an image on the wall as someone who looks at you, you will change behavior. What we do is that we try to behave according to the expectation that this person that might be watching us has. And therefore, it's quite simple that um, we need the absence of this observation. We need the absence of somebody watching, of somebody observing us to feel free and to develop our own thoughts. One year ago, in October of 2013, the Penn Center of the United States has uh, done a research, a survey within uh, their members, the writers in the United States, and asked them what an impact did the revelations of Edward Snowden have on their writing. And one in six writers said that they have avoided writing or speaking on a topic they thought would subject them to surveillance. And not only did they avoid writing about certain so topics, they also said that they avoided speaking on some topics on the phone or mentioning specific keywords in an email. And this is not just a few of them, and this is not just an exception. This is the implication of the general idea there is mass surveillance, not targeted at somebody specifically, just the idea that somebody is watching. It's quite simple. We need the idea, we need to know that we have the space to develop our thoughts, to be able to be creative, basically. Virginia Woolf has described this when she wrote A Room of One's Own. She described how a writer, as well as a woman, and anybody else, needs to have a room to develop who you are, to develop ideas. Hannah Arendt also explored this thought when she said that uh, the idea of privacy, it's essential that you have privacy to be by yourself without anybody else to explore who you are, to explore what your relation to the world is, what your ideas are, without anyone being there before you present these thoughts and how develop your ideas and start discussing them with the rest of the world. Not having privacy kills creativity. And then there is the more practical, the more down-to-earth aspects of the need to privacy. We have discrimination based on gender, on sexuality, based on race or ethnic minority, ethnic background, and, and for many other reasons. Sexuality is one of these reasons that people need to have the freedom to divulge to a public to become out with their sexuality as they like and as they feel the need. And the situation changes. History has shown that the political situation, the societies that we live in can change very much. Ten years ago, I believe, we wouldn't have thought it possible that these days, again, we have gay pride marches that are violently attacked, as happened some days ago in Serbia. We were shocked to hear that the death penalty is being reinstated as a penalty for homosexuality in countries like Nigeria and Uganda this year. And this is not only happening in countries that are far away, somewhere down there. It's happening right here. It's happening increasingly that queer couples are being attacked violently in Kreuzberg here in Berlin. And the same is happening to people 
who make it visible that they are Jewish, which was also unthinkable some years ago here in Berlin, in the center. It's happening everywhere, and people need to have the freedom to be private about who they are and what they are and to decide who they want to and need to show this to. Stalking is another very practical thing where it's easy to understand why we need privacy. There are so many victims of stalking who have no way to understand who the stalker is and why this person finds out so much about them. And it's not just a perception that somebody is there. It can be very, very personal and very aggressive. The same happens um, in a situation of domestic violence. Victims of domestic violence need to have the privacy to not share where they live to protect themselves and their children. And then the third aspect I would like to talk about is data protection. There is so many cases where data is collected about us. There's data brokers who collect all kinds of information about us, build profiles about us, analyze and mine this data and use it for reasons that we don't know. We, in general, have little option to control this data, to find out what this data is, what these profiles look like, or even to change something if we find it's totally wrong, which happens. It's totally beyond us. It's not just data brokers. Also, banks are interested in our information, and whether we will be granted a loan might depend on information that others have collected about us, and we have no influence over that. Health insurances are interested in this information and uh, the way how you pay for certain things, depending on where you live in Germany, that's not quite developed in the United States. That is getting very, very serious. Um, any kind of information about how you live your life, about your health, can be used to change the rates that you pay for your health insurance. And finally, there is the secret services. You see here the Utah data centers of the NSA collecting all kinds of information about us. And you might say, why do I care? I have nothing to hide. This is not targeting me. The NSA is far away, and my personal situation doesn't subject me to that. But have you ever talked to anyone who has tried to get off the no-fly list? <laughs> Trying to fly into the United States, out of the United States, in the United States, where you're on, on that list? The NSA gets very personal. Of course, we might say, there's nothing we can do. That's just the way it is. We are living in a society post-privacy. Technology just develops that way. Everything is being mined. There is big data happening. And we just need to get used to the fact that eventually everything will be out in the open. We need to adjust to the thought. I don't think so. In the 40s, researchers worked on the nuclear bomb and were pushed by politicians to develop a nuclear bomb because it seemed necessary to have a nuclear bomb. Researchers said, scientists said, we have no responsibility for this. It's not our part to decide what happens with the technology that we develop. It's politicians or sociologists or whoever else out there who decides what happens with technology. We are just the researchers and I don't agree with that. Albert Einstein and Bertrand Russell, in the end of the 40s, changed the picture and said, of course, scientists have a responsibility for what happens with the things they develop. And I believe that we live today in a situation where people who develop the software and who have the companies and the technologists that build what is being done with the data have the same kind of responsibility to make sure that this society which needs privacy has the chance to influence what happens with the technology. It's not, it cannot be a situation where technology controls who we are and how we live. We need to take back this control and uh, decide what happens with the technology. You could argue that people are not interested in privacy. They just take whatever is out there and are excited about the nice and colorful clicky things that we can play with and that make our lives often a lot easier and definitely more fun. People don't like that, and exactly for that reason, because people don't understand the implications of sharing all this information, of oversharing, of not using the privacy settings, don't understand which privacy settings to use or how to use them or who to trust 
it's our responsibility, the responsibility of the technologists to make sure that privacy is there by default, that privacy is not an opt-in, but not to have privacy is something you need to opt out of. Thank you very much.